My name is Laura Flores. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I did teach in Colorado for a year. I taught in Taos um, for two years, but I've been here um, teaching for eight years now. And I thought it was gonna be like an easy, <laughs> it was gonna be an easy job. <laughs> and I got into it and I loved it. When I look at children, I see myself, I see my nieces, I see my kids now. Um, and I, I think that all children need somebody to believe in them. Neither of my parents went to, went to college. Um, they didn't even finish high school. And so that wasn't my trajectory, but I had Senora Hernandez that kept telling me, you know, you can do it. And I think it was such an impact that these teachers made on me that I wanted to continue that impact on my, on, on future generations. We're gonna put some of the dirt back, okay? okay. All right, let's give everybody a bucket. When I was a kid, I was running around until when the sun came up until the sun came down. We walk outside and we would just use our imagination for hours. Now kids you have maybe 15 minute recesses, 30 minutes at most, and they don't know how to use that time. What we're seeing is um, that there is kind of a lack of, of play, right? Imag imagination skills. I think we've, we've become so dependent maybe on, on living inside that we're a little disconnected from the outdoors. They can't ask questions about the world around them if they're just stuck on their on their phone. So why not get them outside and get them excited about what they're exploring or what they see? Like this weekend, I had a grandmother, a mom, and a daughter who had never gone fishing ever. This is three generations of women who are now excited to continue fishing. I, I was teaching second grade and I was trying to talk a little bit about the Rio Grande and um, no joke, half of my class was like, what is the Rio Grande? My school was less than two miles away from the Rio Grande. That was eye-opening, right? And that was something that I was like, we need to make sure that my kids, my, my kids, because they are my kids, are exposed, and how do we do that? We have families who are working three jobs. We have grandparents that are raising our kids. How do we get them to these, to these spaces and these places and make sure that they're safe and, and feel welcome in them? So do I have a functioning car? Can I pay for gas to get there? Um, the second big concern that I've heard is, well, what do I do when I get there? <laughs> like, yeah, I've never fished before or I'm at the Bosque now, so now what? Do we just walk around or? And so what we do at Latino Doors is we kind of try to take all the guesswork away. We have instructors who will, who will do guided walks and show them the birds. We've gone to Valle, um, Valle de Oro, Bosque de Apache, uh, just these spaces that we have in our communities too. It doesn't have to be an hour and a half away. A lot of these spaces are in our backyards. We have, we have to create funds um, and that's why the Outdoor Equity Grant is so important. We applied, we got $15,000, um, and it was, I mean, it was, it was a godsend, really, because we were able to facilitate over 300 participants within the last year and a half. All of, all of the events that we provide are for free because we do truly want families to continue being outside in any capacity. Your yeah. fingers come to the corner of your mouth. So if you know people, Aim, release. Share, share, Good share, job. Share. The outdoors and public education shouldn't be two separate ideas. We need to figure out a way to bring public education and environmental education together to make sure that our kids are aware of the resources that we have in our community and why we need to protect those resources in our community. It doesn't have to be academically charged, right? It can be kids running around with bubbles and having a good time, playing in the sun, making friends, that social aspect of it all. And hopefully they become future stewards of, of the land.